Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to Dr. Monkey, where we laugh together and cry together, but hopefully take something away to treat each other a little better. Here's some interesting stories. One about EM vandalizing OP's car because OP wouldn't give her the parking spot. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I hope you'll enjoy it. Story 1. I work in an office building with about three dozen companies operating on the premises, and, because of the odd layout of the building, we have six different parking lots. I prefer using the hidden lot. It requires you to drive through one of the indoor lots to reach it, which, being hard to find, and all of the spots being marked compact, is usually less crowded than some of the lots closer to the road. Not to mention that the door into the building from that lot is right next to my office, so it's convenient in every way for me personally. Today it was raining cats and dogs when I arrived at the office. For some reason, my normal lot was unusually full. However, someone pulled out of a prime space just as I arrived, giving me a much shorter walk through the wetness to reach the door. I exchanged polite nods with the guy, leaving, then pull into the space behind him. As I'm going out of the car and grabbing my laptop bag out of the back, I hear some distant car horn honking, but think nothing of it since it's practically on the other side of the lot. When I turn around to head inside though, EM rolls up in an oversized SUV and slides to a stop on the wet pavement between me and the building, splashing me in a puddle in the process. EM, that spot wasn't for you. Me, excuse me? EM, that parking spot. I was waiting for it and you stole it from me. Me, now irritated. Where? The highway off-ramp? Em. No. I've been looking around for a spot for 20 minutes, and when it comes open, it's for the next person waiting. At this point, I look up and take stock of the whole row of empty spaces she had ignored to come over and harass me about taking her space, and consider the fact that the claim she's making, that whoever was waiting first gets the first available space, is not now, nor has it ever been, a real point of etiquette. Me, gesturing. There are plenty over there that were open before I even got here. Take your pick. Em, no. I need that spot. You need to move now. Me, why on earth do you have to have this spot? Em, gesturing in the back seat. So my baby doesn't get wet walking from all the way over there. I look in the back seat and the kid looking back at me is easily 10 to 12 years old. Also, over there, couldn't have been more than 50 feet further to walk in the rain. E.K. So, me, that's not a baby. He'll be fine. And anyway, your car wouldn't fit in this compact spot. I move and point so she can read the six inch tall letters marking spot was smaller than average. But if you go around the side of the building, there's another lot that isn't compact spaces. E.M. Whatever. You gonna move or not? Your big rear needs extra exercise anyway. Me, already cranky because I hadn't eaten yet. Now upset that this orangutan and lipstick is talking to me this way. Well, I'm definitely not moving for such a colossal idiot. Have fun walking in the rain. I hope you get struck by lightning. I quickly walked away while this charming example of humanity hurled abuse after me. Now admittedly, about 50 minutes later, once I was settled back in my desk, I started feeling really badly that I told this woman I hope she got struck by lightning even if there was no lightning going on in that rainstorm. I continued to feel bad for all of five minutes, when the sound of a car alarm caused me to go to the window and look out. This woman had parked somewhere, gotten out of her car, and was now keying the heck out of my driver's door, while E.K. recorded it on his phone. I took a quick picture of them in the act on my own phone, and immediately called the building security to tell them what was going on. So guess who got arrested for destruction of property and assault? All right, she also spit and scratched on the security guard who went to confront her, so assault. And everything that went down from beginning to end was practically right under the security camera. So it got a good look at her, her kid, and her car, including license plate. So no way she's getting away with it. And since the slur she etched in my door is terrible, she may also get charged with a hate crime. So that's fun. If you do go to court, I hope they force the kid to show the video of his mother destroying your car. That sweet satisfaction of evidence and being betrayed by her own child. Story 2 I finished high school a few weeks ago on a mom break until uni starts. 
During the last few years, I've been suffering from a chronic illness and have found it difficult to have much time outside of studying and being sick, so I do less chores. For context, I live with both parents and two younger siblings. I used to do a lot of the chores when I was 11, almost all of the housework. Outside of the main part of cooking, I do meal prep stuff though. But then I became sick, and school got busier due to it being the last couple of years, and my dad has hated and complained about how I barely do any chores these past difficult years. Now that I've finished school, I've been trying to commit to things that'll prove my health. And I've also started working, i.e. I'm pretty busy. When my dad gets back from work, he'll yell at me for not doing X chore. He didn't ask me to do anything specifically, he just expects me to do what looks like it needs to be done. I haven't thought much about it since I felt that I'm out of practice, so I should be helping out a bit more since I'm at home during the day some days. But today, he realized I joined a gym. I joined the gym three days ago, but he only noticed today since I came home a bit late. I'm joining since I'm really struggling with my stamina, and doctors say to exercise, etc. So he knows and thinks that doing house chores will replace that exercise. He said, what did you do that for? You should be staying home to do house chores instead. And I'm just really angry because it seems like he thinks that now I don't have school for three months. All I should do is chores. He made a comment about me working too much recently and as well. I work eight hours a week because I should be doing chores and taking care of the siblings, picking up brother from school, etc. Ironically, I use that money to pay for my medical and educational expenses because my parents can't afford it. My family eats out once a week at nice restaurants and have a five-bedroom house, so it's mainly just poor, non-existent budgeting. Just ignoring it at this point, but really don't know what to do. Saying something results in being yelled at, and I don't really want to go through that. You have a job and health issues. Remind your dad that you may not be in school until uni starts, but you're not sitting on your rear watching Netflix either. Then remind him that he has two other children, who should also have their own chores to do. Maybe it's time a chore chart was created, with equitable division of chores between the whole family. Story 3 I'm not actually related to anyone mentioned in the story below. There's a family with a large cabin on a lake who hosts cookouts and trips for the weekends for their friends. While we're there, all of the kids call all of the adults present uncle or auntie, no matter the blood relation. That's just how they roll. It's one sad story all around, but it primarily revolves around two kids with very sad stories. Worth noting, the people I was celebrating this Labor Day with have a very it's a village approach to child minding. An adult is left in charge of a little one, and if the little one and the adult part ways, the adult makes sure a different adult is in charge of the kid. Leads to some interesting situations where a kid is MIA, but we've never actually lost track of one and have a 100% safety rate. Well, aside from a few trips and falls and scrapes, but that's just the price of doing business when you're little. The first kid is Max. He's five and was put in sole custody of his dad after his mom was arrested. He wears a diaper still due to the trauma he suffered and his dad feels like he's failed him and as a result, seems to be incapable of disciplining the kid. It's been two and a half years now and the people watch Max like a hawk because he can't be trusted near animals or with other people's things. When caught, he turns on the waterworks and his dad doesn't do anything. The second kid is Alicia and she's four and was adopted by a pair of my friends. She's got a speech impediment that her bio parents tried to solve by beating it out of her. When we first met her, Everyone was given firm instructions. No using the R word in her presence. Not at all. For any reason. Second rule, if she feels comfortable enough to speak to you, you listen. Period. Third rule, no surprise hugs. No fist bumps, no high fives. If she's having a good day, low fives are allowed. If she gets triggered, she just shuts down. Doesn't cry, doesn't do anything. Doesn't respond to outside stimuli. She just goes away and it's the saddest thing to see. Sweetest little kid though. Her smile lights up a room when it comes out. On to the events. Alicia has just hit her why phase a few years late for obvious reasons and she asked me why she gets shocked by doorknobs while running around the house and stocking feet. I happen to rather enjoy these questions and I was in the middle of a talk with her about why that is. She was speaking when Max and his dad arrived. 
I was down on my hunches and listening very closely when Max runs up and just shoves Alicia to the ground and says, Shut up, we Todd. Uncle Opie, my iPad broken. Can you fix it? Brandishing a tablet at me. I won't lie to you. It was a struggle to keep my voice even. But I knew yelling would only make things worse for Alicia. Excuse you. I'm not fixing a thing until you apologize to Alicia. And wait your turn. But Uncle OP, my tablet! Apologize and then wait your turn. No! Then stop calling me Uncle and find someone else to fix it. Bullies don't get my help and they certainly don't call me uncle. Poor Alicia was just laying where she fell, not even crying, hadn't sat up, just looked like a robot that had run out of batteries. I scooped her up and told Max, you stay right here while I find Alicia's mom. This conversation isn't over. He just starts screaming, no Bowie, no Bowie, no Bowie. I snuck inside the house with Alicia where it's quieter for a moment and said, Alicia, I know you're scared right now. But I need to tell you a secret. Can you nod if you can hear me right now? This is very important. I got the tiniest little nod, and I told her, Max has the same exact problem talking that you do, and I understand you much better. You can't tell anyone I told you that though, okay? Bless her little heart. She actually whispered, Really? Of course. Would I lie to you? A tiny shake of the head. I tracked down her mom outside and gave her the Cliff Notes version of what went down. Mom looked like she wanted to rend Max limb from limb, but I told her the plan. She was appeased. They went someplace quiet so Alicia could come out of her shell, and I went back to where I'd left Max. Max was being held by his dad, and his dad was asking Max what had happened to his tablet. And he was just repeating, No boy! No boy! Apparently after I left Max, he'd smashed his tablet on the ground and his dad had no idea what happened. I raised my voice a little so people would pay attention, and asked Max to repeat what he'd said to Alicia. He shook his head and started crying, still shouting, No boy! No boy! and sobbing hysterically. When I relayed the exact events that happened, his dad had the grace to look ashamed. Oh, come on, OP. You know what he went through. Can't we cut him a break? He doesn't know any better. This is the canned response anytime Max is caught doing something like kicking a dog, or stealing a toy, or a phone to play with. I was done. Further discussion ensued. I won't bother relaying, but Max's dad refused to do anything about actually disciplining his child. Just like every other time Max acts out. But this time we were done. This was so far over the line from acceptable, it boggles the imagination. We were planning on doing campfire s'mores after dinner, but I called an audible. The new plan is putt-putt golf and then ice cream. Whoever does the best at putt-putt gets the biggest, bestest ice cream the place has. Every single adult agreed. Max and Max's dad shouldn't come. They got to stay home and think about what they've done. Miraculously, her recorded scores for putt-putt were 18 hole-in-ones. And listening to her laugh while she tried to contend with an ice cream, that was barely nearly as big as she was, made everyone's night. Max and his dad were gone by the time we got back. I hope his dad gets his act together. Max's dad is that poor child's problem, and the next time he pulls out the, he doesn't know any better, please ask him whose job he thinks it might be to make sure he does know better, and how that might be accomplished, because that's the entire point of parenting, keeping them alive and teaching them how to function in society. Also, it's been two years. He doesn't get to use the kid's trauma as an excuse, unless he gets the poor kid some counseling. Parents like him are one step up from worthless. Story 4 Hi, me and my boyfriend live together with his mom and dad. Let's start with what happened. After living with my boyfriend for the past two years, I've been getting very annoyed with him for the things he does. He doesn't clean or even work. He's just lazy. So I decided to confront him about it, tell him I think that he should help out a bit, which I did positively. He ran off after a while and came back to the house screaming that he is paying bills and shouldn't do anything, which his parents obviously heard. He has always gotten baby by his parents, and he has always gotten a golden throne in the house. Here enters my entitled mother-in-law. Oh my god, did she hurt you? Did she slap you? 
I obviously denied and started explaining myself. I just told him that he should help out around a bit and take care. I don't know why he's acting this way about it. I was being polite. She interrupts me. You have no right to gaslight my son about what he should or shouldn't do. My father-in-law decided to come in and be on my side. Well, she is right. He doesn't do anything around the house. To which my mother-in-law decides to explode and yell too. Now you too, stop disrespecting our son and help me scold her. By now my boyfriend has calmed down and started slowly agreeing with me. And the father-in-law that didn't go well either. Even though everyone was calm and agreeing, the entitled mother-in-law starts blowing up again, accusing me of brainwashing her son. I just walked out of there and went to my parents where I'm staying right now. Entitled mother-in-law has always been crazy and does tend to overreact to everything, but this went too far. My boyfriend and father-in-law keep apologizing to me for her behavior, which I understand, but I'm not going back again. Not for a while. So glad you're not going back there for a while. I hope your boyfriend realizes he's a man now and needs to help out around the house and not an entitled child. One thing to note is the huge red flag I'm seeing, which is, if he's not cleaning up around the house now, when he's not working, what makes you think he's going to change when you two decide to get a place together? Mama isn't going to be there to clean up after him, and you're already fed up with it. You can see where this will lead from a mile away. Well guys, that's all for today. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, I'm going to link it right here. The story's about how Karen's called 911 because OP is working being pregnant. Check this out if you haven't, and I'll see you next time on Dr. Monkey.